welcome back to my channel where we're all about leveling up, elevating, and living our absolute best lives. So today's video is we're gonna get into the nitty gritty um, and the elephant in the room that a lot of people don't usually like to talk about, but uh, we will talk about it today, is finances and the important things to consider and the way to kind of um, look at the cost of living and uh, living your best life here in Kampala, Uganda. Um, so this is part of the Moving to Africa series. So let's get straight into this video. All right, so this is a bit of a freestyle video, so I'm sorry if I'm a little all over the place. Um, I did notes in a way where it makes sense reading it, but I don't know about talking about it, but nonetheless, we'll get straight into it. So the first thing I'm gonna say is it is a lot cheaper to live in Kampala, uh, Uganda, and your cost of living is a lot less than the Western world. I'm not sure about the rest of Africa, but I can only speak on Kampala specifically. But I do have friends who have lived in other cities in Africa and have said that um, it is quite cheaper. Our dollar here, or our currency is not the best, so that probably is partly why. But I think that depending on the lifestyle that you decide to live, you can live a really cheap life or you can live a rather expensive life. It's really up to you and how you cater and living for yourself. So I found that I like being in the middle, you know? Rather to deprive myself of the fun things I want to do and the great things I want to see and what I want to eat and where I want, what I want to drink and where I want to go. But at the same time, my everyday day-to-day -day living is on a budget. And I do like that because I'm a young adult with great aspirations and I'd rather put my money towards things that are gonna make me more money. You know, so let's get right into this video. So the first thing I'll say is, um, my fixed expenses personally, I do like all the this to y'all. My fixed expenses personally um, are mainly like subscriptions, loans, um, bank fees, stuff like that. Those are like fixed that I know every month are the exact same. Um, so personally, I like I said in a, my previous video, I cleared out my debts before I came. So the only thing I owe is my student loan. So I do make a monthly payment towards that. And I want it to be bigger, but right now, because I just came, it's at 500 and I'm happy with it being at that. I'd like it to go up to 1,000, but right now it's at 500, comfortable. The size of my apartment, a two bedroom, two bath, usually goes for about 1,000 and a bit. Um, and like I said earlier, you, your life can depend on how you want to live it. You can live it super cheap here, or you can live it more expensive. So there are places that are double the price of what, where I'm living. They're just more nicely built and put together. Then there are people who are living in um, smaller places, so one bedroom, one bath, which will save you a few hundred dollars. So you're looking at about like $700 a month. Then there are people who are living in rooms, which is not my thing. I needed my space and I, I like where I live. If you're in a room, you're looking at about, from what I saw, approximately 200 to 500 dollars. And this is all Canadian dollars. We got to convert it in USD. Maybe I'll write it here, but alongside everything in USD. But so, like I said, it all depends. Um, I was talking with my friend, it was hilarious. There are some people living in backpacking kind of setups and like dorm style, like hostel, um, with like eight people, and they're paying super cheap. And they live and work here. So you can live that way if you want, and that's an option. So that's what I wanted to highlight. So rent really does depend. It's an approximate. Um, I'm not sure how much they're paying, but they're probably around like the $200 per month, like guesstimate. Then they're the ones who are in a one bedroom, one bath, which is smaller than where I'm living, and that obviously is gonna be cheaper. And then where I live is a little bit more, but like I said, I don't do for rent, thank God. But um, I have a filming room here, and then I have a bedroom, a living room, kitchen, two baths. Don't need the two baths, just need the one, but there's another one for guests, I suppose, people come over whenever I decide to host something. Um, but a one bedroom, one bath typically would suffice. So yeah, like 700 Canadian, which is about 500 USD. That's not bad at all for rent money. <laughs> I mean, let's compare it to the other side of the world. It's a lot more. Um, so personally, my subscriptions are Netflix because a girl's got to watch some shows and keep up with stuff. Um, and then later.com. Uh, it's just related to uh, my social media and auto posting and stuff like that. So if you're 
thinking about like your budget, please remember those little things. Like in Canada, I didn't care. I was like, oh, it's just twenty dollars here, twenty dollars there. But technically speaking, that's still part of the budget. Like that's a consistent fixed thing you need to pay for. Um, and then here, internet. Um, it really does depend. Technically, the unit comes with internet, but this month I did pay for it, and it was fifty dollars. Equivalent to about fifty dollars, but typically it comes with the unit. I feel like a lot of units, if you're in an apartment building, do come with internet. So a friend of mine actually corrected me. Most apartments in Kampala do not come with Wi-Fi. So obviously if I were you, I'd check Airbnb before landing in the country and make sure that wherever you're renting, if it is Airbnb or booking.com or whatever, actually does have Wi-Fi. Look for those little lines, honey. And then my bank fees personally per month are, I want to say 15 to 25. I think it depends on how many transactions I do. I just randomly think about 25, or sorry, around $30. And then therapy, I haven't found a therapist that I love yet, so I have been, to be honest, I haven't been proactively searching. But for 2020 January, I do need one, and that would be $150 a month. I don't do therapy here. My friend was telling me she does. It's $1,000. And I'm gonna bring $1,000 to therapy. Like, are you mad? <laughs> so, um, $150 is for a session, and I'm looking for an online therapist. If you guys know any suggestions, please do let me know. That's my budget right now. For it. I prefer it to be lower, but professionals gotta eat, you know? Oh, and I wanted to mention for subscriptions. So, I do have Spotify and other things, but every family member that I Every family member in my family pays for something, so I don't pay for Spotify, but I pay for our Netflix. So that's something to consider too when you guys move. Um, if you have friends, build, get family accounts and start like finding a smarter way to you know enjoy the things that you enjoy all the time. So getting into the next category, which is variable expenses. So these are things that fluctuate every month. I don't know what the total is, but sometimes it's something, sometimes it's another thing. So it really does depend. So the first thing I'll mention is my phone. So my cell phone is interesting. At first I was, gonna, I was considering getting a monthly plan, but then it didn't make any sense. So the monthly plans are about $50 a month. I think it was, a, or $100 a month. I wanna say, cause I'm with MTN, so I wanna say it was about somewhere in the middle of that. But the reason why I didn't even bother writing it down, I didn't gear towards that, is because it depends on how you're living. I work at home, throughout the week. I only leave my apartment to go like eat every day down the street and I can be off my phone for 45 minutes. I do actually enjoy that time of being off my phone for that little bit of time. And then um, if I'm going out to meet friends and do stuff, which is not every single day. Maybe it's every other day, maybe it's every whatever, but it's not every day. And then on top of that, where we go usually has Wi-Fi. So I figured um, calculating how much it would cost for like, a uh, hundred MBs, which usually will get me my Uber um, ordering and all that without um, any disruptions when I'm outside of the house. That's a thousand shillings, so that's about 75 cents. So I guess each day I should pay a little bit more, I guess, so that I'm not, like, I don't have to keep, off top, keep on topping up. But um, I roughly calculated it to about $20 a month for my phone. Um, is it realistic? For me it is. Does that make sense for everybody? Not sure, but the great thing is, is all of this info is available online. So you actually can go on MTN and see the rates um, or when you like star 131 hash when you're here. Um, it pops up and you can see how much it would cost. To me, it didn't make sense doing like a weekly thing or whatever because I know myself and I want Instagram like mad and I'm just like two more minutes, two more minutes and then my 1GB is gone just gone and I paid for one GB for a week. It's just stupid. So for my own psyche, I needed to bring it down and become more responsible. So I just pay for it each day when I actually need to use it. So about like $20 a month. Sorry, that was a lot about phones, but phones are very important. <laughs> so utilities, power. Um, you, what happens is through mobile money, if you have a mobile money account, you can just go and put in your numbers uh, your like machine number, I don't know what it's called, I'm like the worst, but on the wall I have a, like, a little machine and it says whatever power, how much power I have, you can top it up. So I've done it about twice so far in the three weeks that I've been here, so roughly I estimated that it would cost me about $30 a month 
roughly. That, that's, that's why I said it was variable. It really depends on how much power I use, how much I fill because of all these lights <laughs> um, and I have them on and whatever. So it really is variable. Um, the next thing I want to say, which is huge, is transportation. So this is variable as of how, because like I said, I work at home, don't necessarily need to go anywhere. When I go grocery shopping, I can walk down and usually I try and get somebody to take me, like my dad. Um, or I just walk down to go get food, which is across the street, when I eat every day. So technically speaking, Transportation, my Ubers are when I want to go socialize and hang out with friends. Um, a trip is approximately, it's crazy. Like the most expensive when I'm like, should I leave my house? You guys are gonna die of laughter because you'd be like, what? Why would you contemplate? So the most, okay, on non peak season, the most I'll pay is about $3. I live in a city center. Like I consider this little square that I live in my bubble. I don't usually like to go outside that bubble unless someone's driving, me or driving with me, just for my own safety too. So within my bubble, it's about three, two dollars and eighty-six cents Canadian per ride. So that's two hundred two dollars and sixteen cents American um, for a higher end, like that's eight thousand shillings. At most, I remember during the holiday season last year, it was I paid fourteen thousand to get around when it was like spike spike because people were out clubbing and Compella's packed with so many tourists. That's five Canadian dollars, which is three dollars and seventy-nine cents American. So I don't split that up anymore because I live alone and I usually have to meet my friends. So roughly I said Uber's about ten dollars a day when I want to go out and live my best life. Because that's usually going back coming home and going where I'm going, and then sometimes if you go from dinner to a club or whatever, somebody will pay, so that's why I approximated it about $10 um, per day. So keep that in mind. Food, huge, huge, huge. So, if I lived with someone, I would buy groceries. If I, <laughs> I should have not started it that way, but yes, yeah, so if I lived with someone, I would buy groceries. But because I'm by myself, and right across the street they make food, fresh food, everyday, traditionally vetted food um, for about $6 a day by getting breakfast and lunch, I mean sorry, lunch and dinner, uh, not breakfast, so you should have two meals a day. Should stick to three, but I'm trying to do my smoothies again and then do lunch and dinner, trying to find a blender, trying to find all that to figure all that out. But right now, $6 a day is what I spend on food. Um, I it took me like a few weeks to really calculate it, but I was like, oh yeah, six. And seven is being generous. So with that being said, that kind of rounds it to about like three, I want to say, so six times 30 days, $180 Canadian dollars a day. However, you got to take out the weekends. I didn't do that, but like taking out the weekends is usually like, about to eat, like, Eat, eat with friends and socialize and stuff. So that's what you should consider. And some random days during the week too. You know, if you're having elaborate like, dinners for no reason. <laughs> um, so the next thing I want to say is the gym. So the gym, interestingly enough, I didn't add it to my budget because I haven't been working out at the gym. I work out at home. I went to the gym. The last time I went to the gym here, that's close to me where I can walk. It is. The, a lot of the equipment wasn't really working and functioning properly, so it's like, okay, if I'm just gonna be doing mat work, I'm gonna do it at home. So, for those of you who are interested, who want it like here with the info, it is fifteen dollars a day, and that's standard everywhere. A monthly pass is a hundred and something. Um, I don't drive, so personally, I was just like, this doesn't make sense for me. Um, when I want to go to the gym, I'll just pay the per day. But yeah, it's forty thousand, forty thousand shillings, which is fifteen dollars a day. Um, I left clothing blank because the average person, if I were you, I would just bring my clothes from where I came from, like pack as much as you can and bring it. Um, and then if you need little things, top it up. But because I do styling videos, uh, I have to go and purchase clothing. And honestly, I haven't really quite figured it out. It's all over the place. Like going out to a uh, nicer area, to will find clothes that you find anywhere else in the world for way cheaper, like well in the West anyways. So because of the taxes coming in, they have to put up their prices. So you're paying a lot more for like, stuff you would just get at home. I'm waiting to go downtown and I will give you guys a re um I'll give you guys an update on the actual prices because downtown 
is where they supply the people who are selling around my neighborhood in my suburban little area and there had a spike so to me it just doesn't make any sense i was just like why 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 okay so another variable expense is personal care i say variable because i know i have to do this monthly who knows if it's every month every three weeks every two it really does depend on what's going on and what i want to change but manicures pedicures hair like braiding down on some my wig <laughs> if I want to get braids, all that. So, doing your hair here is very interesting. There's salons all over the place. They're absolutely everywhere. You can find one anywhere. Um, in terms of braiding under my wig, I didn't like how they, um, what did she do? She overly blow dried my hair, and I don't put heat on my hair, so that irritated me, where I was like, I'd rather wash my hair myself and then dry it and then come in and they just corner it. So cornering was, I think she just said it would be about like $15. It's 40,000, 40,000 shillings from where I go. And that's in a mall complex. So I'm sure if you go like somewhere even like regular, 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 schmegular off the road is probably way cheaper, but that's something to consider. Actual braids, last time I did them was three years ago, I wanna say. And as much as so long, they were very long, up to my butt, they were super cute. So those ones, I think um, it was like 70,000. I don't know if that included hair and oxygen. I paid for it, thank you. Thank you. Um, it was really sweet of her. But uh, yeah, I think it was like 70,000 or something like that. But anyway, um, that's something to consider. Obviously, and sorry, many pedis, depending on where you go, I've really realized I'm do not particular about my pedicure because it, they do the same thing everywhere. Some of them leave the, what's it called, the gel polish on your toe. That irritates me. So sometimes you have to be careful where you go. If you find a good person, take that person's name down, call in advance, ask for schedule. That's my routine. But other than that, um, many pedi is, I want to say collectively, and I have many because I'm saying like gel meals, like colors, cuteness. I don't do tips, but I'm sure if you do tips, it's more. Um, all of the works is about, my nails, last month it was 115,000. So what is that in dollars? So in dollars, that's 31, dollar, 31 USD and, or 41 Canadian. So not bad in terms of comparing it to at home. I pay double for that at home, um, but it is different here. It's not what I wanted, but that's a topic for another day, honey. I still need to get over that. <laughs> but they do do gel nails. If you're used to gel nails, they do gel nails everywhere. They're really nice and where I went, pretty, really decent. And then my pedicure, I believe, was like 60000 That was at a different salon, but nonetheless, that's something to consider on how much you're gonna pay. And with that, plus the 60,000, you're looking at about, yeah, $62 or 50, 62 Canadian dollars, 50 United, USD, United States, USD. <laughs> so we touched on fixed expenses, variable expenses, then I have a category called random expenses. <laughs> My random expenses include eating out and going out, so dinners and clubs. This is very random. I'm not even gonna like calculate it because it's, it, it just can't fit in a budget. It's weird. It depends on where you go, what you're doing. Things are all over the place. People just make up prices. It's insane. But what I will say is, on average, um, to eat out, you're looking between 10 to 20 Canadian dollars. 20 is like the high end, really nice places. Unless you go for sushi, then you just know like you're good. Like by the time you have drinks and enough sushi things, just like at home, it's gonna be more than a regular restaurant, that you're looking at about like $50. But when it comes to just regular like steaks, salmons, pastas, whatever, like $20 and that's nice places. So I, like, I found that so nice. I was like, oh great. Unless you're eating at a high end hotel. I didn't include that. I have no idea how much that is. I haven't gone there to eat, but um, I'm sure it's more. But like high end, considered really nice restaurants. Yeah. And on average, it's like $15, which I think is hilarious. I'm like, wow, this is so good. I love it. So 15 Canadian, which would be 11 USD. So hugely something. Like, I'm just like, wow, it's so much cheaper. So drinks. Um, I found that across the board where you go cocktails and wines are always 20,000 and 20,000 is about eight dollars Canadian and six dollars USD 
amazing, but obviously certain times of the year is a lot crazier. So if you're here during crazy ass December, you're gonna spend a lot of money. But if you're here during the regular months and you're just kind of like going to the usual, doing your usual routine and you go out so often, whatever, it's not a lot if you think about it. It's a lot cheaper than home. I feel like when I go out to a really nice restaurant in Toronto, me and my sister go out, we're easily spending $200 splits, or 200 and then splits, so about like 100 for a good time. You don't need 100 to eat and have drinks here for a good time, but for the club, that's another story, because you're buying shots, you're buying bottles, you're buying whatever, like that's when it kind of starts to go up. And that's why I said in the beginning of this video, it really depends on the type of lifestyle you want to live. I'm not a bar person, I don't like bars, I don't like people smoking in my hair and my face. Um, it just brings a different type of crowd, it's not my type of crowd, so I don't like that. I like loungy things, I like more like sitting, busa, with really good music, you can dance if you want, or you can sit and socialize, it's your choice, but I do like that, and I do like clubs too, but most of the time I like more loungy things, um, that costs a little bit more, so that's something to consider if you're in Kampala. If you like bars, you're gonna have a cheaper experience, and congrats to you. <laughs> So the next thing on my budget that I want to mention is savings. So I ideally, and I say ideally because it never works out this way, I ideally like to put away 10%. Um, but it's hard to say that when you're always paying loans or credit cards. But now that I'm not always paying a credit card, it is something that I'm really going to routinely bring into 2020, even while I'm here. 10%, even more would be a great, amazing, 20% would be great. Uh, but it really depends on how things really realistically work out while I'm here. But savings, huge. I wanna buy a house in Canada. This is what's happening. <laughs> so obviously keep that in mind, be realistic with your savings and be strict with yourself. Be like, okay, maybe I can't do what I wanted to do because I have to put my savings aside. Adulting sucks. <laughs> and the last thing I want to talk about, which is like the biggest topic, is my income. So I started, uh, like I mentioned in my first video for this series, I started a job teaching online. So that really works on how much I want to work and what how much effort I put in. So with that being said, typically speaking, my income would be around like without killing myself and obviously having time to do other things like my vlog, my YouTube and whatever, I ideally wanted to be able to make $2,000 a month USD. So $2,000 USD for teaching online, that is my set thing. Then I do social media management and that pays me $1,500 a month is yes, monthly. So that works out really nicely. Um, and then I didn't include my YouTube income because I don't get paid monthly because I just started becoming very consistent. So my checks have always been very sporadic and they have not been large at all. They've been like $100 here, $100 here, $100 here, $100 there. So being realistic, just letting you guys know that. Um, but that will change this year. I'm really excited about. And partnerships. With brands, I left that blank as well because that this has always been gifted so far. I've always just been getting gifted partnerships, but no cash deals yet. But it makes sense. I mean, we're still growing over here. Um, so yeah, pretty much stuff that making up. I did want to mention an amazing website that I thought was super accurate. Like maybe there are a few things they were missing that I needed to add because I think they're thinking of it just from an expat, expat point of view and not from the point of view of like, oh, there are people who like live, live here all the time, you know? Um, so it's called Numbio, Numbio, and, I, and then you just do like numbio.com slash cost of living. I'll put the link here and down in the description box. But what I really appreciated about it was um, you can actually do this whole like cost of living thing and like see the estimates for anywhere in the world because I remember wanting to live in LA it was and I remember coming across this and I'm like oh they have one for Kampala when I was looking for to do research for this video so I thought it was pretty pretty dope um they're pretty accurate even when it came to grocery store things like cost of vegetables cost of fruits cost of like little little things like that definitely check it out Put in any country you want to go to in Africa and it will pop up and it's pretty, or any city, sorry, you want to in Africa it will pop up because it's pretty, pretty dope. But yeah, that pretty much sums it up. If I forgot anything, please do let me know, guys, because um, I do want to be as helpful as possible and I'll do an updated one of this when I'm leaving to go to Canada before I come back again. Did I actually end up spending more or did I actually end up spending less? Because I know every month is going to be different because your girl wants to travel. So obviously it'll change. 
But yeah, that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to talk about. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please, like I said, join us for the journey of leveling up, elevating, and living our best lives. And that means not sticking to society's idea of what you need to be doing. If you want to go live somewhere else, go live somewhere else, honey. Go do that. Go live somewhere. If you want to wear something beautiful and you want to feel beautiful, you do that. That is what this channel is all about. Thank you guys so much. And please do check out my other helpful videos. And I will see you guys next time.